Okay, everyone. Um, I'm going to show you how to do line weight. And so for this activity, you're going to need your ultra fine Sharpie marker, as well as your extra fine pilot pen, which were in your art PPE. So we're going to practice it before we actually put it in our artwork. So line weight. What we're going to do for line weight is we're going to outline everything using our marker and our pen. And then we're going to designate where the light source is coming and add a thicker line where we would see shadow. So when light is um, coming from a certain angle, it's lighter on the side that's the closest, right, and where the light is hitting. And then the opposite side is where you would have your darker shadow. So you can see that animators often use what we call line variation from thin to thick to thin again to create volume and form. Um, we are not going to add color. We're not going to add shading to this. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is switch to my second camera and show you what this is going to look like. Okay, so this is my almost finished example. And so what I want you to notice is how the toys stand out from the background. I still need to outline some of the background, but I don't want the background to stand out too much. So what I would need to do is to use the right tool. So the thicker pen that we have is our ultra fine Sharpie marker. And it's not what we'd call a thick Sharpie. Um, it's still very, very thin. Now this is not an art marker, so you have to be extra careful with it as well because it will bleed a little bit. Um, but for, the, for drawing one, this is sufficient. If you at home have something like micron pens or pit pens or fancier pens and you wanna use them, that is fine. You just wanna make sure that you're using the thicker pen for the, the three views of the toys and then the thinner pen for the background and for details. So we're gonna practice this first in our sketchbook and then we will um, be able to then later translate it into our drawing. So your practice image, you should have a lot of good detail. I'm not finished with mine, but I do have an area that is pretty much done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab out the thicker marker to practice this and if you want to, you don't have to do anything to this toy drawing. If you wanna use a piece of tracing paper on top, you can tape it down with maybe some masking tape to hold it in place. You wanna make sure it doesn't wiggle and move on you. And then you could outline it. Um, just so that you can actually see it a little bit better, I'm gonna go ahead and um, make it a little bit clearer without using the tracing paper. But I like the idea of going in and um, practicing it first, especially if you're like unsure of yourself. Okay, so when we're at home, we need to be extra careful because this is a permanent marker. So when you're lining, you don't want to hold your pen down on a spot for too long because it's gonna start to bleed. And I think you can probably see that if I hold it down, a little pool of ink will form. So you wanna be extra careful to kind of go at a good um, pace. I'm gonna switch my marker really fast to a brand new one. That was my old marker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully go in and outline everything at least once. And I want it to be smooth and controlled. So take your time um, without kind of lingering too long to make it nice and smooth. Okay. If you go to something that's really small and you feel like the marker is going to bleed or lose some detail, you can use your pen on some of these details as well. You might just have to go over it a little bit more to get it to stand out in some places, but you kind of get the gist of it, right? So you're going to take your time. Um, if you have a lot of really sketchy lines, 
and you want to um, go through and um, clean them up with your eraser, you might want to do that before you start to outline. But make sure your details connect to the larger form. So you don't want any areas where the details are kind of like not connected to something else. So just take your time, have a little bit of patience, right? Let it dry for you. And then when it's drying, if you want to then go in and clean up some of those pencil marks, you're welcome to go ahead and do that. Okay, so we want it to be nice and clean. Um, you're going to do this for the whole toy. You're going to use the marker. Okay, then to add the line weight, what I want to do is I want to look at the bottom details. We're going to assume that the light is coming from the top. Now, some of you might have some lamp lighting where it's coming from a side, and you can choose to do the side as well. But if you want to just make it simpler on yourself, designate the bottom. Like, don't write it into your drawing, your final drawing. Um, I'm just going to write top. Here we go, right bottom. <laughs> Anything that is horizontal or um, lines up with the bottom of the paper, I'm going to go ahead and add some line weight to it. So here, like on the bottom of the eye, I'm going to go over it with my pilot pen. So this is the detail pen. This bleeds a lot less. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to thicken that detail up, right? I'm not going to do the top of it. I'm not doing the sides of it. I'm only doing the bottom. So if by going over this and adding some line weight to the bottom of it and doing a gradual transition to the side, it's going to start to make it look more 3D and it's going to start to make it look um, like it has a little bit of shadow. So the key with line weight is to kind of go over it a couple of times. Um, without getting it too clunky and to kind of go from like thin to thick to thin. Okay, this is like I said, a technique that a lot of uh, cartoon artists use, animators, manga, right? A lot of illustrators use this. And so it starts to make things look 3D. Right? So when it starts to become a side, make sure that you let it get thinner. So I'll show you an example here, right? Notice that the bottom of the leg is thicker. The bottom of each segment is thicker, right? So you want it to stand out and notice that not all lines are gonna get this treatment. I like to use the pen for this part because it bleeds a lot less, right? Get this off of there, right? So when I hold it in place, it doesn't bleed nearly as much as the marker. Now, if you're not trustworthy, like you feel like you won't be able to um, be steady enough, you could do the whole thing with the pen, but then go in and um, go over it a few more times, sorry. For some of the little details, I like to use the pen. So like the texture that's on the top of my bug here, it's hard for you guys to see, but you can see it here if I go up close, right? Some of that I like to do with the pen because it's like a minor detail, right? So I really want you to go nice and slow. Um, honestly, I don't even, I'm not even concerned that you do the whole thing. I'm just concerned that you do it properly. So if you get to the point where you're like, I think I got the hang of it, go ahead and take a photo of it to show me that you're ready to move on. I'll give you the green light and you can go ahead and start outlining your toy drawing. 